So today we're gonna talk about the boxing IQ of some of the greatest fighters in boxing. Here's what Archie Moore, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, had to say about boxing IQ. There's much about jazz that relates to boxing. The improvisation, the flow, the beauty of the notes, the tempo. This video was recorded with Gustavo from Rocky Marciano Brazil. Go check out his channel. Also make sure to visit my second boxing channel, Legends of Boxing in Color, where you can watch remastered boxing classics in color. And let's get on with the video. So what do you think consists of a like intelligent and smart fighter? What is what is boxing IQ, Gustavo? In my opinion, more than clear that when we're talking about combat sports, therefore individual sports, is when you have autonomy, you have self-confidence to understand what's happening on time and to adjust distance, adjust breathing, check out what's not working and improve what is your, your game and master your emotions. There is, there is no one else to do that for you. Some fighters would be stronger than others but would lose the battle because they don't have this they don't have this they are not able to take decisions without the, the corner so some guys they excel in iq so what we also talked about before is like the adjustment you you make within a split second but a very smart decision like many people would need like another day or another week to analyze what has happened and what would be the smarter thing to do in the situation and fighters with a good boxing iq they can they can feel basically the situation and read it much much more faster and intelligent than other fighters they can just process information faster than other fighters the secret is before the fight. I'm going to prepare your hands as much as your mind. And then uh, once it's ready, you don't long, not longer, no longer need me anymore. Whatever happens on the canvas, you will master the situation by first mastering yourself, your impulse. The impulse control is very, very important for, for many. Yeah. And also to control like the emotions of another opponent, like reading. Very well done. Uh, Self-control. Yeah. And what you said with the self-control, like discipline and your own emotions, basically train them and control them. Self-control is uh, under pressure, you know, in your working place family your wife and kids you have to be able to master yourself in in many areas but uh, when it comes to boxing that guy that wouldn't be so dangerous or used to be have this kind of game mm -hmm. he changes and or maybe you didn't sleep good uh i don't know things change if you are able to change or together with things, you'll be all right. You'll find a better place because you end up to step on the canvas ready for changes. Boxing is not like, a, it doesn't change much, but uh, when it does, stay calm, you find a way out. Not many guys uh, can do that without someone else's help, but some excel on that. Even though it's like a, a sport, of course, a lot of it is um, mental. It's a big portion of the, the boxing game is like a, a mental a mental fight, a, a spiritual well fight between two guys. Spoken. Mental. So now we will start and look at the lists of Teddy Atlas and Randolph Borchuga that they have created and we will go through the list of the ten smartest fighters and we will comment and look how do you rank them and what do we think? So at number 10, we have going in with 
Tommy Loughran. He was an active fighter from 1919 to 1937. And he was like one of the the great movers of the light heavyweight division at that time. He was style was very similar to one of the older fighters before him was like Jim Corbett, for example. If you look at his fights, he has a lot of energy and he 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 was also involved in many entertaining fights around the time. When you can see him, he's he has like a very nice to watch style it's like the best i can describe it is very the way he moves and makes decisions lafron used uh he had a trick to make decisions play defensive so he would not get hit and he would capitalize on his opponent mistakes and outthink what he did he was very very good with reacting yeah he was not in a hurry so uh he didn't mind he liked it to be on a defensive position from where he could observe not getting hit and then find weak point of his opponent if it's not intelligent i don't know what it is playing defensive some people don't like it but uh, it gives you time yeah it's it's also more more healthy, healthier and smarter way to go about boxing to to get less injuries and so on yep yeah number nine uh they have picked james j corbett um, who was in the turn of the century very active from 1886 to 1903 and one of the only fights that they filmed of him or one of the noted one is his fight against uh, bob fitzsimmons of course his shocking at the, at the time shocking victory over john L. sullivan it wasn't recorded of course but we we can get it like the information from newspapers and so on and he what we know of is he that he outboxed and outmoved the older champion we can see what he what his style was like against Fitzsimmons he had him also down in one round with a I think an uppercut he had a decent uppercut and he was like one of the first guys to really move about one of the first movers and to introduce this more defensive style and he had success at the time but the one fight uh, <laughs> that we have of him he at the end he he gets caught up with uh, by Fitzsimmons uh, shot to the to the solar plexus but yes. we can see we can see that he is still a, a, a good style a very intelligent fighter Corbett he um, is famous for trying to make the opponent nervous before the fight and uh he he could enter his opponent's mind and against who did he use this uh psychological warfare tactic do you know against what opponents he 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 made like the the shenanigans and so on well uh whenever he he had the chance mm -hmm. he would say uh, this press conference and, and it was not uh, so polite maybe when uh, he, he he didn't look calm um he was like a spider uh i know he had his web his psychological web today is very normal he was uh, self-protective uh in in this psychological uh way so uh when he couldn't hit he made his opponent believe he could not be one somehow and caught many people uh, attention at the time, it, the thing it, it works. I saw the other day uh, Andrea Galvão talking about uh, some altercation he got into with uh, Gordon Ryan uh, before some no gi jiu jitsu fight. He apologized. He was trying to do the same. Now it's a, it's a some kind of you can sell the fight. Corbett was uh, selling defeat, and he always did it. Also, the sign of a very like a smarter guy who would. Not just use like the means he has in the ring, but outside to gain every kind of advantage. Like we also saw that with famously Muhammad Ali would also often and nearly always do some kind of a shenanigan before the fights and get into the head of the other guy. Now, now on um, at number eight we have Gene Tani. He was an active fighter from 1915 to 1928 when he retired as a heavyweight champion and famously in his fights against Dempsey is what ultimately made him famous 
And we can see it like he outclasses Dempsey and is always a step ahead, it seems. Never gets caught until this one moment of the long count. You could argue that he won every round, round in the two Dempsey fights um, except this one where the long count occurred. And it, it shows that he is a, a smart fighter also against other guys. It's, he always breaks people down in a very safe way where he doesn't get, take a lot of damage and has a good jab, which is also impressive for that, that, that time. What do you think about uh, Gene Tani? He's the opposite from Corbett because uh, Tani's intelligence mm -hmm. comes from his temper, from his... Like he's like a very... He reads a lot and stuff and he's very... Yeah, a, a calm man. Yeah. He was... Uh, Collected. An uh, intellectual. Uh, he, he liked to study. He read a lot. And uh, he was the gentleman. He fought like he was in a dinner. I said this once. Having in a restaurant, having dinner with a beautiful lady. And getting hit wouldn't affect his peace of mind. And he knew how to hit. Yeah. And sure. so uh, he didn't think, wow, I got hit. I must hit back. His calmness, his inner peace would never be affected for a guy like Jim Dempsey, who was always moving forward and real brawler and uh, other guys. When someone like a brawler gets hit, he, he hits back, like that's his style. He, he wants he, to bring you in, a, in a firefight because that's what he what his style is and what he wins. Tani is not like that. He is, likes to be it. more educated and is more educated. Yeah. There are pictures of Tani uh, in the garden reading a book yeah. and with uh, with some cup of tea and then you watch him fighting and what you see the same thing a peaceful man doing uh, some thing he like it, it doesn't look like a, a, a bloody battle pride fight yeah good point yeah you see the same uh, well he was so calm it amazes me to this day that his name is so I don't like the word underrated, but uh, so under the radar because like he's unknown. Uh, uh, basically, it's yes. We, we have to we have to him. say it. This is true. At number six, we have uh, Archie Moore, a long time professional. He was active from 1935 to 63. He was uh, fighting through multiple divisions and uh, eras, you could say. I think he, he think he started at middleweight, and eventually he um, he, he ended his career with fights at heavyweight against yeah. the likes of. I think I don't know if uh, like at that time Cassius Clay was his last fight, saying no, so no, Ali. I, I, but his yeah. his finishing fights were at heavyweight, so a guy who fought them all, who fought Patterson, and so on here. He has like not a traditional style, but it's like made out of. It just came from the experience he has, like the crouch and cross cross guard. He has this interesting interesting guard that I also very um, like, where he would parry a lot with his right hand, keep it yep. keep it there, counter. He's also it's a style that also in also like the other guys we've mentioned before. They also always invites the opponent to throw a jab, throw, throw a right, throw something at him so he can like slip or dip to the right and then come up with his right counter or something. Smart style, to be honest. Deflecting with the elbows and stuff. It's very yeah. experienced and smart style. Yeah. I wouldn't have... Um, how do you say it? I wouldn't have expected him on the list, but I can I can respect the the pick to be honest. I can I wouldn't have picked him at the, like uh at to, in the top ten list. What do you think? Uh, uh, but I can see that he deserves to be like mentions like in a honorable mentions list like here. But I wouldn't pick him in the top ten. Uh, what do you think? Mongols. Uh, he had balls. He was uh, unafraid. But and this is what I think he, he should be in the 
this list in the top 10 no. list? What do no. you think? No, no, I, I love uh, Achimura, yeah, but uh, uh, I, I like the style top of 10 it. list. Uh, he was uh, unafraid, he feared no man, uh, he, he fought countless times and he would go forward. He was he had skills he will always uh be reminded as a worker like, like a um boxing uh, if he lived 300 years he would fight to the last yeah <laughs> day uh, so uh but this is not uh, iq he it, it was him uh, a brave man i think more experience man. is more what sums up yeah him that than came with like time. boxing iq but i think yeah. he's also no, a smarter no, IQ is not the it's not yeah it's not doesn't fit for him. Yeah, okay then let's go on to the next one. At number six we have Kit McCoy, who was an active fighter from 1891 to 1916. I think he was a light heavyweight champion, I think, back in the days, but I'm not really sure. I don't know a lot of about him. I've only seen him in one of the sparring sessions against um, Corbett against uh, James Corbett. I don't think there's a fight of him. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. Registers. Uh, so so available. it's a hard... To, so I don't know how they can judge it, him to be the tire. I don't know if they don't even have a film on it. I don't really... Wouldn't pick that up. But okay. What do you think? Do you know? Do you know? Have you read something no, about him? No, 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 not much. Uh, not enough to say about uh, IQ. Yeah. Uh, it would be hard like from... How would you judge that if I, I bet Teddy Atlas also hasn't seen? Maybe they have a film or something. I don't know. But in my opinion, uh, this is a personal taste. Yeah. Is a thing of, uh, Geschmack uh, so a bit of a. I, w- I wouldn't. I mean, let's say it how it is. Maybe they they just a bit biased, like towards like older fighters, and they would just have them in there, like because yeah they are like old old guys and they say yeah old times were better and then they pick someone who hasn't even has a boxing film on them uh, i don't understand it but okay it's a, it's a mystery because uh it sounds to me like a matter of taste yeah uh, saw something and included him in here but i don't want to be unfair yeah yeah what they what they say in the book he could uh, outsmart his opponents. He did something that uh, invented the corkscrew punch. So something like would his hand would uh, spin around itself as it hits okay. the opponent, and uh, uh, it hurts uh, in any kind of fighting style. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, IQ is something else yeah i don't but, well, agree i is, think also uh, you would hurt yourself maybe if you get too much power onto this technique i don't yeah. know let's go to number five we have sugar ray leonard a very one of the best known fighters active from 1977 to 1997 one of the four kings in the first fight against Duran, he, he lost, but in the second, he had the perfect, the punch perfect performance. And he's one, he's known for like controlling his opponents emotionally and controlling a lot of the situations. He is against Tommy Hearns, he was great when he read the situation well and was instructed also by Angelo Dundee to get in the knockout, but that's something. You need a good boxing IQ to do so to so, so switch up the style and actually go out there and, and knock out somebody as great as uh, Tommy Hearns in his prime also at welterweight and that's that's quite an achievement. After the fight, uh, when Leonard after he fought coming out from retirement, he bought then fought Hagler right then and out of retirement. Well. Uh... You see the disappointment on Hagler's face. He said, "I'm done. Uh, I came here to to fight." Mm-hmm. And uh, he quit I after can... that. He he never returned to boxing after the yeah. The and fight. The, Leonard was uh, walking around the ring and making 
uh, faces, and uh, he did the same against uh, Duran. Uh, well, uh, and I quote: Duran said, "I won't fight that fucking clown," and walked away. Uh, and there's something here, uh, very, very uh, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. He said, this. Yeah, "No mas," he said, uh, "No more." Leonard he baited, he acted like a clown with him, I did not, with his right before attacking Duran with his left. So uh, for me, this is intelligence. He didn't give his opponent what he wanted to have. He, he also made him target. quit then, because yeah, he, he made, made him, him angry, frustrated, frustrated, yeah. Uh, uh, the guy is ready to see who's who, and when he looks before his eyes, Leonard is not there anymore. He's walking around and uh, calling out uh, the audience. Hagrid hit him 1,000 times, but he lost his temper, uh, but he didn't show it. He just said that those uh, ESPN guys, uh, I know, uh, came with the mic to interview Hagrid after the fight, and he said them. I have nothing to say. I came here to fight. Uh, so uh, Leonard, intelligent as he is, made it look like a circus. And this frustration uh, made people question uh, the quality of the of Marvin Hagler's boxing. And well, this is intelligent because Hagler was the man, was the real deal. Is, is the is the brain of boxing. Everybody loves Leonard. Uh, he could he could get hit and knocked out, and he would win. <laughs> <laughs> this, Was this one of these guys of that you you knock out and you get a draw or something? <laughs> yeah, <It's the> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfectly. So, so. They 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 just are also so popular that you can't do nothing about it. It's just yeah, good they, good and selling tickets, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Most important, to of find course. Leonard, and they say, ah, "Okay, we have a schedule. Uh, yeah, you in the garden uh, against uh, Leonard? No, okay, <laughs> give me the money for the. He won. Yeah, I'm not. You, you know it. Okay. You, do you think he's smarter than than Sugar Ray Robinson? But uh, I don't think I don't I don't know if it's fair from for me. To compare now at number four we have uh willie pep one of the the great featherweights and he fought from 1940 to 1966 and what can we say he was like a defensive defensive master one word like the way he would like let sandy sadler run into nothing this is just uh, something else just just by moving about this Great, great defensive mind and mind yeah, and, yeah. and all that. Good decision making. What you think? Yeah, definitely. People who like boxing, they they know they know Willie Pep. So yeah, but uh, he should be more. I know he's not so famous like uh, like it, like his like problem Dempsey, is the, it's the punching power. At the end of the day, you need to sell tickets. You need and uh, most most you don't get casuals fans to to watch like a. A fight where they know in the beginning this is gonna be 15 rounds of just yeah. boxing. They, you don't sell tickets with that. It's not not good. Not good for te for selling tickets. But he was a very smart fighter. He, he didn't care. He was cool. He, he cool. was very good. Uh, yeah, you, you can learn learn a lot about uh, defensive decision making when you watch him, like for for sparring and so on. If he attacks this way, he always knows which angle. In which angle he moves out and in which direction and so on and slip slip this one uh, counter this one and here you step to the side and so on when you don't expose yourself too much you're being intelligent but uh you're being boring <laughs> with uh, <laughs> one of the guys one of the guys who's also you could say the same about it's like mayweather he is also yeah later on boring but but he managed to do it he managed to sell tickets later on but but I think that's more the personality than actually what happened to the fight. Yeah, his his uh, statements uh, sold tickets, and then uh, later uh, his invincibility. He wasn't beaten. And early on, he was he was entertaining uh, in the beginning when he was a still young champion and so on. When he was the what was he called, pretty boy at the beginning. 
then became the money boy. He, he he's okay. I think he's not. Uh, he's paying his bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Number three, we have the m most known here on this list, Muhammad Ali, active from the 1960s to 1981. A favorite of mine, of course, and most boxing fans, uh, Muhammad Ali, entertaining in his uh, pre-fight and rattles his opponents, controls the emotion. And if you look at the, the decisions he makes in the ring, um, I think at the beginning he wasn't that smart, but he became very... Um, intelligent in boxing later on very in this from after after he came back from the exile he had to be like a smarter fighter because after that his his foot speed was gone a lot so this is what this is when he had to start uh, trading and from combinations then he couldn't rely so much on his foot speed and his hand speed you see it in the in the Frazier fights in in this fight against Foreman you know, you know yeah. the story about the, the Foreman fight. No. Dundee and, and Ali had planned to to stop Foreman, similar to the way they fought Liston in the second fight. And this is what they planned, but it didn't work because Foreman's chin is just too too good. And then, then Ali had to change the style on the fly, basically, and resorted to this uh, where, he, where he was on the ropes and stuff. Yeah, made the rope a dope, and uh, this was something. Even his corner, like screaming uh, within the rounds, uh, uh, "Get off the ropes!" That like, and then he came back and came back in the corner and said, hey, "Shut up! I don't. I know what I'm doing, you idiots." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is something else. It was it's like, yeah, it's Sorry, like bro. it's like he teached Dundee sometimes boxing more than more than. Uh, the other direction sometimes when he was older like in yeah. in, the, in the 70s and he, then he really knew what <laughs> then he caught the shots in the in the camp yeah uh well uh he got involved in so many issues uh yeah politics uh racism and uh religion so but uh you know uh when he was in uh, Olympian, uh, he was 1960 in Rome. Uh, he was a quiet guy. I think he wasn't even supposed to fight, and he was a replacement. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure, but the uh, thing is, most of his issues and noise and his rhymes, everybody knows. But when he had to face, listen, listen was the yeah, it's a well, monster. Uh, you don't want to face. A, uh, yeah, so he. Someone told him, I read this, or he figured that out alone, by, all by himself. He had to, if you're going to fight, to fight crazy men, you must convince this man that you are more than crazy. Yeah, that is true. And he 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 played this this role uh, perfectly. He tried to before the cameras in interviews on interviews, and <laughs> and he said, "Man, you are so up." And I'm, I'm I'm going to chew you and uh, and he said, man, look at this guy. Can a guy can a such ugly guy be <laughs> world champion? And so he got into his. This is intelligence. Yeah, uh, I'm it's sorry. So funny. Uh, uh, this is, uh, this is I, I love warfare. the I love the build ups uh, before they before and, the listen one. So the thing is created, and then uh, uh, he was ready, not, not that ready, but uh, Ali was not a puncher. He was not a hard hitter. Uh, well, like others, we know. Like, uh, listen. Yeah, yeah it's the speed that was good on him. Yeah, he had to get rid of, uh, out of reach and wear him out. And he went there like uh, he was ready to kill him. I don't think he was, but uh, he played this theater and. I think it worked, and I don't know if uh, the shoulder pop-up problem really happened. Maybe yeah, happened. I don't know if uh, problems with mafia. Uh, well, yeah. I, whenever yeah, listen is involved, you don't know. <laughs> it's like we, we talked never, about before. <laughs> the, yeah, there's the, the lots of things that maybe in the future. Strange case, but and I, I and uh, that the phantom punch. It, it did hit him, yeah, it but, did uh, hit I don't know if uh, that strong, but uh, Ali always 
found a way out. Uh, this is IQ. This is uh, pure IQ. Uh, and out of the ring was emotional uh, IQ. Yeah, he, he, had both, he had both parts. So he, clearly. he had both. He always found a way to adjust. Well, I don't know if Ali is, is uh, in this list. Uh, it's like number two. Number three, he is. You, th you think I this is a deserved spot or you think it could be higher, should be lower? What do you think? I think it's okay. Well, uh, Ali... Number two is not not bad at all, but uh, uh, well, uh, he's he's number if, three. If right? you number three, right? like a, it's okay. how many? Uh, yeah, he could because Ali he did something else. Uh, he put together what he saw in the past. Yeah, uh, Joe Lewis's game and Sugar Ray, and he said, "Well, boxing is not about hitting." Uh, sometimes you can use your hands, okay, but it's about lots of things yeah. moving. I uh, should state this. Joe Lewis, I miss his name here. In the list, yeah. I think he should be like, um, instead of McCoy, or I wouldn't put yeah. him so highly, to be honest. It's like a, maybe 10 or something, Joe Lewis. Because he he was a good fin he was a, he good, a good finisher, but... He wasn't the smartest guy, so uh, Joe Lewis, I think. He was a great finisher, great in thinking how to find the openings. But when somebody like a Tracy Joe Walker stands in front of him, there, there's problems. There's, it's not yeah, like yeah. he, he figures out everything like that. Yeah. Like the first uh, so Walker we'll... fight, he, he, he got the decision or something, but clearly lost it and got dropped like four times or so nice 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 that uh to rem to mention yeah, like, yeah Joe, uh, Joe Lewis, mention. definitely at number two we have uh joe gans he was called the old master and he was an active fighter in the 1800s 1893 until 1909 um i think there are only a few fights from him a few good ones where he he got the knockout in a very clever way he, he is i've seen him Fight is very, it's definitely a smart fighter. Yeah, the famous film is like the Joe Gans against uh, Battling Nelson. And his the knockout I saw, I just looked it up, it was Joe Gans versus Kit Herman. That's a great knockout. It was like Herman wasn't was at the ropes, he threw like a haymaker, he yeah. slipped back, and with a short uppercut, he knocked him mm. out. As poo, good shot, and very smartly. But again, it's not. I feel it's not enough film to judge it. But I don't know. Yeah, I think this 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 number what number, number two, two is he? It's it's like uh, praising his uh, his feet. Uh, uh, he was he had range. Yeah. And he was intelligent in using it. And and using it to provoke yeah. action and then react powerfully. Mm, and yeah, that's, that's what we see in the film, right? So uh, in in this in this sense, uh, many guys uh, uh, with uh, tall guys, they didn't have this kind of the sense of uh, well, I can reach this guy uh, one mile from away, but uh, I'm I'm going to 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 make him feel safe. And then he comes to me, and the uppercut is destroying his jaw and uh this is this is beautiful and uh i think but there's not a two here i think it's some kind of let, let's let's not One forget of the things what a great fighter did this yeah. old fighter it's more like a, yeah, yeah exactly like what he's known for is what what uh, joe gans is known for is i think he was the first black champion i think yep the black uh, first. he was the first black champion at like lightweight and he won it by I think Nelson then fought him. He made like a low blow, and then Joe Gans was announced as the winner. Yeah, yeah. Controversially, now that you mentioned, the f yeah. that's what's happened. Number one, we have Benny Leonard from this list is the smartest fighter. He fought from 1911 to 1924, which was his first career. Then he retired, I think even undefeated, I think. And But he had to come back because of the Great Depression in 1931 and fought till 32. Yeah. His fight against um, 
Jimmy McLaren, I think. Yeah, he he had in 1932 had his comp against against uh, McLaren, and in this fight he also, even though it's I think his last fight or one his last fights, he still see that uh, he he if if he had the same um, stamina and build he had in his prime, he would have won that fight because in the first fight uh, in the first round I think it was he even nearly drops uh, Jimmy. McLaren and but he later on guesses and gets uh, bust and all and gets knocked out but one fighter in his prime is like against Lou Tendler and when he outboxed this uh, great softball and he had him he d- control controlled the distance very well against this guy and ha- had him had him at the back of this the jab against all the time it's like in the 1920s he was known and so on like always said to be like one of the best defensive fighters before like Willy Pep and so on. So okay, I've just looked that up. Okay, so Joe Gans fought as uh, a lightweight and also so Benny Leonard is lightweight. No, yeah, I said I said that. It's not a lot. It's like t- around I think two fight films or so about him. The ESPN made a, a good documentary once about him, a short one. I know. If- if number one is the right place for him, but uh, he, he's a good. He's, he he he's a smart style. He, you can you can look at the film. He is he's a smart fighter. Put them together with really smart guys like Leonard, like Ali. I don't know Sugar Ray, Joe Lewis. Um, number one is uh, uh, I won't take it from him. I don't have the right. Who would you pick number one? Joe Lewis. He's not better than Sugar Ray, but. Yeah, when the game changes uh, for better techniques and things go to uh, next level, I would be I wouldn't stick to this list the way it is. So I would I would uh, I should Ray Robinson up. would be would be the guy, but he's not the the smartest one. I f- I think I think Ali Ali I don't is the know one. What, who I would pick up. I don't know. I would pick either Ali. Ali is either at least two. I don't I think so. I think. Probably Muhammad Ali, number one. I can't think of a better number one right now. Then maybe Willy Pep is good. And gets maybe Gene Tani or so. Well, uh, Gene Tani is... A, uh, where is Gene Tani here? It's like at number eight. Well, uh, yeah. Gene Tani deserves better. Made no mistake. Or at least like number six or something. Uh, and well, Sugar Ray Leonard at number three, yeah. I think. It's actually, I think the order they have, like Leonard, Pep... And Ali, I think maybe Leonard was yeah. even, I don't know, is he smarter than Pep? I don't, who knows that. But I think Leonard, Pep and Ali is actually Tony, a, good, number a, good four. Yeah. Or a good a good names for these, for the top three. Don't know what order, but those three names is good. Maybe let's go through some honorable mentions. What, what yeah. do you have? Some names, names that you think? Ah, uh, Sugar Ray, uh, 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 Joe Lewis. Yeah, Joe Lewis was, wasn't Without completely on the list. Yeah, yeah, I would say uh, to be honest, he is one of the, the smartest finishers. That I think the smartest yeah, and, finisher. Yeah, powerful jabs. But, and, uh, yeah, but but uh, I don't know overall if I would put him on the list. Uh, I don't know because there's some. Like he can't def- um, adjust defensively and so on. That's not what Lewis can do as that well. He's very good offensively, the yeah, smartest his fighter. Defense but was defensively, in, not uh, offensive. The, the smartest one offensively, but I think you you need the whole package yeah, to be here right. on the list. You're I think right. what I think. Uh, the the ones that I have as honorable mentions, the one that you wrote me before, is actually a good one. The, the you also said yeah. Lennox Lewis, yeah. I think. Which is uh, very true, I think, because because from the nineties, from all the champions, I think Lennox was probably the smartest uh, fighter there. Then I also have written down like Penel Whitaker, then Floyd Mayweather, Sugar Ray Robinson, Orlando Conizales. It's like one of the he was like Lomachenko, but in the nineties, I think. Patterson. Floyd yeah. Patterson, you think? I I don't I wouldn't say so. In this li- on this list. I wouldn't have him as, I, I wouldn't have him okay. on the list. I wouldn't have him as honorable mention either. Oh, yeah. uh, he's oh, just great. He has smart things about him, but overall, he 
he doesn't have the self mastery to be here. He is just he is too scared and often and yeah. mm. doesn't uh, control Being his emotions good his enough. Strongest point. And like like you said, uh, the whole package counts. Yeah, it's just, it would have him like he's the uh, hand speed of Patterson is the yeah, best. Yeah. I don't. Uh, He's like a machine gun. It's like eight punches yeah, or like ten punches in a second. Uh, or so. Joe Lewis's jabs. And I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. What do you make of this list? Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, Overall. not the list, but uh, the criteria. Uh, do you think it's uh, more subjective than objective? Yeah, the it's best it's... thing. If if you see a list like that, you clearly know who made it mm -hmm. because. There's always a bias and it's subjective. And you can see that this is what this is released by some old timers who picked out like older names and then thought who can we pick in the here. So I think there's but I like the 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 Leonard to Ali list with uh Willy Pep, those three. This I uh, like them a lot in the list. These so are good. Uh, should this you think this list could be more objective i think so yes I, i think it's hard to pick the to pick in fighters who you don't have film of it's like if you have someone like that and you judge him by record like harry grab you can say yeah he achieved a lot look at this record who he beat that's well and fair you can do that without having the film of him but if you say yeah he was the smartest in making decisions in the ring then you need some kind of proof of that. I can't go off a newspaper record and say he's the smartest or what uh, they let, have. let me go come back to Archie Moore. I would like to listen your input again. Like I said, I've, I thought he's one of the, I think he has some smarts and so on, but not probably IQ. not enough to be in the top 10 list. So like no disrespect, I think he's a smart guy and so on, but He's more experience. Well, what I said is here is more is more like the experience that comes yes. through with that, because he doesn't fight like he fights in a way that I've inspiring a copy a bit, so that you don't have to react as fast at, uh, as other people. Is the cross guard, and you have yeah. more time to react yeah. when you fight in that way, and you had don't and, and this is a way so I don't have to, so have more time to think. And you can deflect with the elbows and so on. And also people, especially nowadays, they are very surprised when they see this kind of defense. And they often hurt themselves when they try to get through the, the elbows and forearms and so on. I like that defense. Yeah, I, I have not much to say about uh, McCoy, but uh, I will. Yeah. And Benny Leonard. Uh, which uh, sounds me sounds to me something like uh, some subjective choice, but uh, I don't have mm -hmm. yet the right to say I, something. I've, I've seen many, many, many uh, more of the old school guys who picked Benny Leonard, and I think there's some truth to that. But I don't know if it's deserves number one pick. That's hard to say. I've seen both fights that they are available from him. He's clearly like a smart fighter. Yeah. I can see that he is in the list, in the top 10 list, but I don't know if it's the surfing of number one. I don't. Yeah. Again, the Ali, Pep, or Leonard is either one of them. Is I don't know what order, but these guys. Other honorable mentions I have here, I also uh, said it a bit before, is like Jersey Joe Walker, I think, is has more, I think, ring more ring IQ than, than than Joe Lewis for example because more he's more complete I think he is also defensive smarts about him it's very fluid and so on this but offensively then not, not so good but more complete is what I go from another I have is uh, Ricardo Lopez if you know him he has like a record that's 51 and 0 and it's pretty brilliant uh, fighter if you can see the highlights and Harold Johnson I have I, I can think of some but uh, they are they're good they won but they yeah. are uh, uh, when yeah. it comes to IQ I want even yeah. fan of Marcelo 
And uh, if you stop the field, yeah. ah, the guy didn't have skills. Yeah, he didn't. So he was intelligent enough to embrace the fighter he was. And this is not stupid. And he never lost. But uh, I wouldn't mention, at least for not losing, I would only only a reminder that uh, whatever you do in life, if you want to keep doing this good or improve it, first in the first place, embrace who you are and the way you do things. And from there you can improve. And this is what Marciano did. I think it was... Uh, intelligent for him up to a point that uh, he in a very smart way quit this is not enough to get him into this list mm -hmm. and not, maybe uh, not even as a honorable mention but this goes to other fighters that uh, fought much more than him had much more skills than he had but in terms of intelligence iq i don't know i think that uh, we cover the, 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 the most... A good amount yeah. of fighters, yeah. I, well, now that you mention Marciano, I think one of the things that surprised me about of, about him is when I first saw like this... He had like this series like called Main Event Marciano. Do you know that where he comments on like fights and so on with some guests? There's, he had like this series of when, he, when Marciano retired... He had some kind of a show where he would invite like famous oh, yeah. guys or he, he, in his time and then watch fights was, with them. And he, was hot, he always uh, had like he very was hot technical. To fight Ingo and now he, on this on these shows he would also he was always have like a, even though he wasn't a technical fighter he would have a very deep technical understanding of boxing, which I was surprised. The, the comments he did about Ali, like he said. Ali never took a clear no, no, shot. I, I sent you, I sent you at the fights. Then I sent you that where he there are some fights that are comment where they are commented by Marciano the whole way through, and he has a very deep understanding. Yeah, or well, decent understanding. Much I think. more than as a fighter. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, so, great. And as you said, uh, when you say Marcia, I think as a child. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was an honorable mention. I forgot about. <laughs> I was holding that. my. my I forgot tongue. about that. Uh, because because <laughs> Charles uh, had something. He found the hole. He found the unprotected, the not the, the, the uncovered defense point, and he yeah, and... he hurt. Doesn't matter if he hit you uh, on the liver or on the shoulder um if i had to as a charles he would him, hit you I, right i'd so rather on. fight sorry listen uh i would run all night and he would never catch me but as a charles <laughs> is for me one of the most dangerous mm -hmm. guys because yeah. he, he could hurt you he would catch you yeah. unexpected. You find, 100%. You're close like, like, uh, uh, we say, like, like a turtle. And he'll find a... a he will still yeah, find the spot. And hurt. And, but I still would fight, uh, rather fight uh, Charles and listen. Uh, no, yeah, listen, listen you, you have to say... <laughs> uh, you have to be... Uh, I, uh, uh, to run for 15 would, rounds. And... If I can bring my... If I can bring my bike into the ring, then <laughs> yeah. listen, but... Oh my god, <laughs> not so. was, man. I, I, I tell you something, he did time in prison and uh, etc. He had problems. Listen, could fight box, he could box, he learned. And the guy yeah. was by nature he quickly uh, uh, muscle, uh, and he was flexible, he was fast, uh, he was strong, and yeah, uh, well. It was trouble. Okay, let's, let's bring the show to an end. One of the last things I wanted to raise is maybe like for other fans, like a few active fighters who I would think is uh, fighters with very high boxing IQs, like current active fighters. I don't know if you saw the, the fight with uh, Terence Crawford. He is one of the smarter fighters right, right now, I think. Very smart performance by him. 
then Tyson Fury, I would mention, then Alexander Yusek, Jerome Ennis and Caleb Plant. This is these are the guys from the current era I would want to mention as being one of the smarter ones. Some things came to mind during the conversation. And yeah, me too. Uh, th this is good to uh, uh, and bad. <laughs> What's your what's your what's your okay, top three? Uh, Muhammad Ali number one, number two, Joe Lewis, and number three, Sugar Ray. All right, okay, you heard it. I, I, I have you. I've said um, I my my top three was uh, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Willie Pep. That's my favorite pick out of this this uh, list from Teddy Atlas. Leonard it's like the Sugar Ray Leonard. I, I, that's Sugar a Ray. great pick. I want to thank you all for for listening and. Please give us your top, or at least top three, if you can, top 10 list of your smartest fighters. And we want to see that and discuss the topic. And we see you next time.